So moving on to the, the different cell lines, neutrophils, clear cytoplasm, creamy off-white, maybe a slight pink tinge to it, depending on your stain. Most of the time in rapid stains, you won't see that pink tinge. Um, lobulated, three or five lobes, um, and as I say, the kind of standard size for a white cell, um, and the commonest one, the most familiar, and therefore the easiest one to use as your benchmark for staining um, and uh, for sort of checking on uh, what's going on and then looking at toxicity. So these are smaller and the smallest ones. Uh, they have a very high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. So most of the cell is nucleus and very little cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is kind of usually a uniform blue color. Um, and remember, these all have different lifestyles, if you want to call it that, as in uh, neutrophils are produced to be uh, effectively lost through the mucosal surface, so they're produced every day, um, and then they're lost through the uh, mucosal surfaces at an hourly rate. Um, whereas these guys don't, they recirculate. So they go into blood, back into the lymphatics, back again, and keep going around, looking for their antigen. Okay, neutrophils are just produced to effectively commit suicide at some point, um, somewhere. So uh, T and B, different stages, and again, your analyzer might not uh, be familiar with them and therefore misdiagnose them as other things, um, and the blood smear then can't start to tell you um, what they are um, and where they're coming from and what they're doing. These guys are the largest, they're also the trickiest because they're the most variable. Um, the nucleus can change in shape from these, any of these kind of things. The cytoplasm is usually some sort of bluey, uh, kind of grey colour. Um, it might become vacuolated and kind of have clear white holes in when it becomes activated. It'll also have clear white holes in when it becomes degenerate in the uh, blood um, tube you know, in time in vitro. And sometimes, depending on the stain, you can have a slight pink hue to them. So they're larger. The thing I want you to kind of uh, bear in mind in terms of trying to distinguish the two, because once neutrophils become toxic, they become blue. Um, once uh, monocytes become activated, they become vacuolated. So it can get quite confusing, um, and certainly your analyzer wouldn't have a clue, um, and often misdiagnoses these things. Um, so it'll completely mismature, uh, sorry, mature, a toxic neutrophilia and call it a monocytosis, um, or vice versa, in terms of depending on how severely or uh, markedly it's affected. So the nucleus is variably shaped, but is always a more of a pinky, uh, pale, and more irregular texture to it, where the nucleus in a neutrophil, much more black, darker purple, uh, much more uh, denser, with maybe sort of lines through it, um, but completely different um, to that. Okay, so going back to here. So this is more of a blackish, um, dark purple, whereas these guys are more pinky purple. It's not so obvious in different slides, so I'll show you, and obviously there's some smears to look at down the bottom. Um, these are one of the types of granulocytes, so the same as a neutrophil, but you'll always have a bluish cytoplasm to them in the background. Um, less lobulated, not, so it's basically halfway between a monocyte density um, and a neutrophil density. Dog, cat, and again, uh, uh, as a kind of feature-wise, eosinophils and basophils that we'll come on to, uh, they're denser, finer, and more regular in a cat than they are in the dog. Dogs are much more regular, much more globular um, as well. This kind of orangey, reddy, brown color, uh, much more of a kind of pinker, paler, redder color than cats, typically, okay? Um, basophils, again, one of the granulocytes, more irregular in a dog, more uniform and denser in a, in a cat. Um, but now, rather than being kind of orangey, reddy, brown, um, they're now kind of paley, pink, purple, lilac, uh, magenta, uh, depending on what you are talking about, stain-wise and also species and uh, in even individual. Okay, you will not see any, if uh, at all, basophils in most healthy dogs. Okay, in cats, I would generally say you'll commonly find maybe one or two. Okay, your analyzer doesn't know what they are. Okay, even if it has a ba what's called a basophil channel. Um, because it hasn't really been tested against them, okay? And most commonly what it'll do is confuse these um, as monocytes. So you might get an eosinophilia and a monocytosis, and actually when you look at the blood smear, it's nothing to do with monocytes, it's just an eosinophilia and basophilia, okay? Um, or you can get a, a sole monocytosis, and it's a basophilic response and potentially paraneoplastic, but the key is that the analyzer does not know what they are, okay? It's getting confused um, and calling them uh, one cell line uh, when it's not. <coughs> 